September 17, Ezra's Prayer Concerning Intermarriage When these things had been done, the Jewish leaders came to me and said, Many of the people of Israel and even some of the priests and Levites have not kept themselves separate from the other peoples living in the land. They have taken up the detestable practices of the Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. For the men of Israel have married women from these people and have taken them as wives for their sons. So the holy race has become polluted by these mixed marriages. Worse yet, the leaders and officials have led the way in this outrage. When I heard this, I tore my cloak and my shirt, pulled hair from my head and beard, and sat down utterly shocked. Then all who trembled at the words of the God of Israel came and sat with me because of this outrage committed by the returned exiles. And I sat there utterly appalled until the time of the evening sacrifice. At the time of the sacrifice, I stood up from where I had sat in mourning with my clothes torn. I fell to my knees and lifted my hands to the Lord my God. I prayed, O my God, I am utterly ashamed. I blush to lift up my face to you. For our sins are piled higher than our heads, and our guilt has reached to the heavens. From the days of our ancestors until now, we have been steeped in sin. That is why we and our kings and our priests have been at the mercy of the pagan kings of the land. We have been killed, captured, robbed, and disgraced, just as we are today. But now we have been given a brief moment of grace, for the Lord our God has allowed a few of us to survive as a remnant. He has given us security in this holy place. Our God has brightened our eyes and granted us some relief from our slavery. For we were slaves, but in his unfailing love, our God did not abandon us in our slavery. Instead, he caused the kings of Persia to treat us favorably. He revived us so we could rebuild the temple of our God and repair its ruins. He has given us a protective wall in Judah and Jerusalem. And now, O oh, our God, what can we say after all of this? For once again, we have abandoned your commands. Your servants, the prophets, warned us when they said, The land you are entering to possess is totally defiled by the detestable practices of the people living there. From one end to the other, the land is filled with corruption. Don't let your daughters marry their sons. Don't take their daughters as wives for your sons. Don't ever promote the peace and prosperity of those nations. If you follow these instructions, you will be strong and will enjoy the good things the land produces, and you will leave this prosperity to your children forever. Now we are being punished because of our wickedness and our great guilt. But we have actually been punished far less than we deserve, for you, our God, have allowed some of us to survive as a remnant. But even so, we are again breaking your commands and intermarrying with people who do these detestable things. Won't your anger be enough to destroy us, so that even this little remnant no longer survives? O Lord, God of Israel, you are just. We come before you in our guilt as nothing but an escaped remnant. Though in such a condition, none of us can stand in your presence. The people confess their sin. While Ezra prayed and made this confession, weeping and lying face down on the ground in front of the temple of God, a very large crowd of people from Israel, men, women, and children, gathered and wept bitterly with him. Then Shechaniah, son of Jehiel, a descendant of Elam, said to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God for we have married these pagan women of the land. But in spite of this, there is hope for Israel. Let us now make a covenant with our God to divorce our pagan wives and to send them away with their children. We will follow the advice given by you and by the others who respect the commands of our God. Let it be done according to the law of God. Get up, for it is your duty to tell us how to proceed in setting things straight. We are behind you, so be strong and take action. So Ezra stood up and demanded that the leaders of the priests and the Levites and all the people of Israel swear that they would do as Shechaniah had said. And they all swore a solemn oath. Then Ezra left the front of the temple of God and went to the room of Jehohanan, son of Eliashib. He spent the night there without eating or drinking anything. He was still in mourning because of the unfaithfulness of the returned exiles. 
Then a proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem that all the exiles should come to Jerusalem. Those who failed to come within three days would, if the leaders and elders so decided, forfeit all their property and be expelled from the assembly of the exiles. Within three days, all the people of Judah and Benjamin had gathered in Jerusalem. This took place on December 19, and all the people were sitting in the square before the temple of God. They were trembling both because of the seriousness of the matter and because it was raining. Then Ezra the priest stood and said to them, You have committed a terrible sin. By marrying pagan women, you have increased Israel's guilt. So now confess your sin to the Lord, the God of your ancestors, and do what he demands. Separate yourselves from the people of the land and from these pagan women. Then the whole assembly raised their voices and answered, Yes, you are right. We must do as you say. Then they added, This isn't something that can be done in a day or two, for many of us are involved in this extremely sinful affair, and this is the rainy season, so we cannot stay out here much longer. Let our leaders act on behalf of us all. Let everyone who has a pagan wife come at a scheduled time, accompanied by the leaders and judges of his city, so that the fierce anger of our God concerning this affair may be turned away from us. Only Jonathan, son of Asahel, and Josiah, son of Tikva, opposed this course of action, and they were supported by Meshulam and Shabbatai, the Levite. So this was the plan they followed. Ezra selected leaders to represent their families, designating each of the representatives by name. On December 29, the leaders sat down to investigate the matter. By March 27, the first day of the new year, they had finished dealing with all the men who had married pagan wives. Those guilty of intermarriage. These are the priests who had married pagan wives. From the family of Jeshua, son of Jehozadak and his brothers, Maaseah, Eleazar, Jerob, and Gedaliah, they vowed to divorce their wives, and they each acknowledged their guilt by offering a ram as a guilt offering. From the family of Immer, Hanani, and Zebediah. From the family of Haram, Maaseah, Elijah, Shimea, Jehiel, and Uzziah. From the family of Pashur, Elioenai, Maaseah, Ishmael, Nethanel, Jazabad, and Ilissa. These are the Levites who were guilty, Jazabad, Shimei, Kileah, also called Kilita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. This is the singer who was guilty, Eliashib. These are the gatekeepers who were guilty, Shalom, Telem, and Uri. These are the other people of Israel who were guilty. From the family of Perosh, Ramiah, Isaiah, Melchijah, Mijamin, Eliezer, Hashabiah, and Benaiah. From the family of Elam, Mataniah, Zechariah, Jahiel, Abdi, Jeremoth, and Elijah. From the family of Zetu, Elioenai, Eliashib, Mataniah, Jeremoth, Zabad, and Aziza. From the family of Bibai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zabai, and Athlai. From the family of Benai, Meshulam, Maluk, Adai, Jashub, Sheel, and Jeremoth. From the family of Pehath Moab, Adna, Kilil, Benaiah, Maasiah, Mataniah, Bezalel, Benuai, and Manasseh. From the family of Haram, Eleazar, Ishijah, Melchijah, Shimea, Shimeon, Benjamin, Malak, and Shemariah. From the family of Hashum, Matani, Matata, Zabad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei. From the family of Benai, Maadai, Amram, Ul, Benaiah, Bedaiah, Kilohai, Veniah, Meramoth, Eliashib, Mataniah, Matnei, and Jesu. From the family of Benuai, Shimei, Shelemiah, Nathan, Adaiah, Magnadabai, Sheshai, Sherai, Azarel, Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph. From the family of Nebo, Jeiel, Mattathiah, Zabad, Zabina, Jadei, Joel, and Benaiah. Each of these men had a pagan wife, and some even had children by these wives. Nehemiah's Memoirs These are the memoirs of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. Nehemiah's Concern for Jerusalem In late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. 
Han and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, Things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands, listen to my prayer. Look down and see me praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand are your servants. O Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem. Early the following spring, in the month of Nisan, during the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes' reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never before appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, Why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified. But I replied, Long live the king. How can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, Well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, If it please the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, How long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I would be gone, the king agreed to my request. I also said to the king, If it please the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. And please give me a letter addressed to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, for the city walls, and for a house for myself. And the king granted these requests, because the gracious hand of God was on me. When I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letters to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. Nehemiah inspects Jerusalem's wall. So I arrived in Jerusalem. Three days later, I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. We took no pack animals with us except the donkey I was riding. After dark, I went out through the valley gate, past the jackal's well, and over to the dung gate to inspect the broken walls and burned gates. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but my donkey couldn't get through the rubble. So though it was still dark, I went up the Kidron Valley instead, inspecting the wall before I turned back and entered again at the valley gate. The city officials did not know I had been out there or what I was doing, for I had not yet said anything to anyone about my plans. I had not yet spoken to the Jewish leaders, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or anyone else in the administration. But now I said to them, You know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins, and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, Yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. 
But when Sanballat, Tobiah, and Geshem the Arab heard of our plan, they scoffed contemptuously. What are you doing? Are you rebelling against the king? They asked. I replied, The God of heaven will help us succeed. We, his servants, will start rebuilding this wall. But you have no share, legal right, or historic claim in Jerusalem.